Before the NBA and the WNBA, basketball was a much different sport than we know today. Early female teams, such as the Chicago Romas and the Philadelphia Tribune, and early male teams, such as the New York Wrens and the Harlem Globetrotters, produced great players equal to the likes of Wilt Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, LeBron James and Cheryl Miller, Lynette Woodard, and Lisa Leslie. For African Americans, basketball has always been more than just a game. It's been a way to showcase physical ability, display innovative skills, and demonstrate intellect by outwitting opponents. Basketball has been an escape from poverty and a means of achievement and empowerment for many black youth. For Edwin Bancroft Henderson, basketball was a way of building character and physical strength. But most importantly, Edwin Bancroft Henderson envisioned basketball as a means to gain civil rights for African Americans. For more than a century, Edwin Bancroft Henderson, physical educator and civil rights activist, has been credited with introducing the game of basketball to the African American community. Henderson considered basketball not only a physical sport, but in a time when the doctrine of separate but equal was the law of the land, E.B. Henderson considered athletic achievement a vehicle in the struggle for equality. He was born on November 24, 1883 in Washington, D.C. By the time he was 12 years old, Henderson organized a youth baseball team. After each game, he would write a review which was published by the Washington Evening Star. Eventually, the newspaper paid him a penny a word for his stories. E.B. Henderson attended segregated M Street High School in the District of Columbia. The M Street School was considered one of the best schools in the country for young blacks. After graduating from Minor Teachers College at the top of his class in 1904, E.B. Henderson entered the Harvard University School of Physical Training in Massachusetts. While attending Harvard, Henderson was introduced to the fundamentals of basketball, which had been invented by James Naismith in 1891. James Naismith created the game in 1891. He was attending the International YMCA Athletic Directors Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts and his athletic uh, director had asked him to come up with a game that could be played in the winter time. Uh, they had football in the fall, they had baseball in the spring, and they had calisthenics in the winter. And so he came up with a game that had a vertical goal versus a horizontal goal. And uh, the eventual game was what we now know as basketball. With a few exceptions, African Americans were excluded from the game until 1904. For African Americans, basketball was a game that didn't really exist until about 1903-1904 when Edwin B. Henderson learned the game and brought it back uh, to the Washington, D.C. area. There were a few African Americans playing, such as Bucky Lou and a team in Massachusetts, but by and large, it really was a game that they were not participating in at that time. Upon returning to Washington, D.C., there was no opportunity for blacks to participate in organized competitive sports. E.B. Henderson began to organize teams, leagues, and referees so African-American youth could participate in sports. He saw basketball as a way for young African-Americans to attend college. E.B. Henderson was the man who introduced, who first introduced basketball on a wide-scale organized basis to African-Americans. When we look back at where we came from in terms of our our basketball ancestors, if you will, our on-court heritage, you have to originate it at E.B. Henderson. Advocating for racial justice and interracial competition in sports, he founded the Eastern Board of Officials in 1905. In 1906, Henderson established the Interscholastic Athletic Association and the Public School Athletic League. African Americans were barred from whites-only leagues and athletic organizations but the passion to play could not be restrained. Blacks formed their own teams and leagues, thanks to the vision of Edwin Bancroft Henderson. A groundbreaking league was formed in Washington, D.C. in 1906. E.B. Henderson formed and played with the colored YMCA team called the 12th Streeters. The team went undefeated for two years, winning the Colored Basketball World Championships in 1910. 
Henderson played the position of center in basketball, and at the turn of the 20th century, he was considered one of the best. He played his last game on the eve of his marriage to his wife, Mary Ellen, in 1910. A year later, Henderson successfully petitioned Howard University, and the 12th Streeters, mostly Howard University students, became the university's first varsity basketball team. Edwin B. Henderson authored the first book on African Americans in sports, entitled The Negro in Sports, published in 1939, and co-authored The Spalding Athletic Handbook from 1910 to 1913. In the foreword of the book Hard Road to Glory, written by tennis great Arthur Ashe, Henderson is recognized for his contributions to the development of African Americans in the sport of basketball. In a 1985 interview with Bryant Gumbel on the Today Show, Ash discusses information he uncovered while conducting research for his book. Why this subject? I mean, it's, it's certainly not one that hasn't been covered before. That, that's a very good question. And the reason is it had never been done before in, in detail or very comprehensively. There were two attempts made, one by Dr. Edwin B. Henderson, who was the first uh, black publicly appointed official who ran the, the physical education uh, department for the public schools in Washington, D.C., the colored public schools. E.B. Henderson led the charge against racial segregation in sporting establishments in the District of Columbia and Northern Virginia. A civil rights activist, he organized the first rural branch of the NAACP. He also served as an officer in the Washington, D.C. and Virginia branches of the NAACP. Physical educator, coach, trainer, and civil rights activist, Edwin Bancroft Henderson began organized basketball for both boys and girls in the segregated schools and recreation centers in Washington, D.C. In 1904, his vision included African-American women in the game of basketball. Today, the WNBA is center court for talented women with careers in basketball. He was able to open a door and an opportunity to many young African-American men and women to introduce them to the game to say, hey, you can do this. You can do this. Not only can you play ball, but it's also going to help you get into school. It helps you build a career. And it's really a great foundation for everything that you're going to do in life. He was the first to set the stage for blacks to play the organized game of basketball from Washington, D.C. to New York and then nationwide. Edwin Bancroft Henderson.